So welcome back. This is now third video about vibrational normal modes taking the example of water, H2O. So now uh, we got to the point where we had uh, seen that the um, uh, the vibrational normal modes for water are 2A1 plus B1. Now we're going to uh, go on now to find out which ones are stretches and which ones are bends. So let's uh, call this a uh, little subsection stretches and bends. This sounds like a sort of warm up video. Right, so stretching uh, and bending vibrations. Now the way we find these is that uh, the stretches, or rather what we do is we find the stretches, and that's equal to, or the symmetry of the stretches is equal to the symmetry of the bonds. So here, for water, no harm in drawing water again, uh, with a C2 and a sigma V here and a sigma V there. And E, of course, so this is sigma V and sigma V primed. Um, X and Z and Y there. So uh, for this uh, molecule, we have two bonds, which I think what I'll do is highlight them in green, actually just to make it really obvious where these two bonds are. There were two sort of links between the molecules. So what we're going to do now is, now I'm not going to write down the full group table because that's just off to the side to the left, but we'll just write down the top of it, E, C2, Sigma V, XZ, and sigma v primed, which is in yz. And so the representation of the bonds. So again, we're asking the question, how many stay in the same place when we do the operation? And I suggest if you're um, playing along, then that you uh, pause the video and have a go at this. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is just go right along and do it. So for E, we have um, we do nothing, so both bonds stay in the same place. We put a 2 here. For C2, the two bonds will swap place, so that gives us a 0. For sigma X, uh, Z, sigma V, X, Z, that's in the plane of the screen or the plane of the page, as I'm writing on a piece of paper here. Um, then... Uh, what we have is uh, a 2, because uh, in the, if we reflect in the plane, both bonds stay in the same place. But if we reflect in sigma v primed, which is in yz, which is perpendicular to the screen, then uh, that gives us 0, because the two bonds swap over. Now, we can do the same sort of process that we went through uh, down here to figure out um, uh, exactly what uh, this representation is to reduce this representation to the irreducible representations. I recommend that you have a go at doing this and pause the video, but um, I'm just going to write down the answer here. So the answer is A1, it's equivalent to A1 plus B1, and these are the stretches. So that must mean that the bending are equal to A1, because that's for vibrations minus for stretches. So um, I'll just uh, make that clear. If we have... Um, Vibrations are 2A1 plus B1 down here. 
and we're going to take away the stretches which are a1 plus b1 we are left with just a1 as a bend left over okay i hope that's clear so um now um we've got to the point now where we know what our vibrational normal modes are we know which ones of them are bends which ones are stretches so uh, the last thing we have to do um, uh, is to think about IR and Raman activity. And when I, what, what this is really is this is selection rules. And so for IR, this is an infrared spectrum where we get absorption and emission or rather it's either an absorption spectrum or an emission spectrum in Raman a Raman spectrum we fire a laser in or what well, it's normally a laser and then we look at light which uh, has got a slight change in frequency um, or slight change in energy due to it hitting a molecule and uh, the molecule absorbing a bit of energy or adding a bit of energy to the light. So, um, so th there's two types of uh, spectrum, two different ways of uh, looking at a vibration spectroscopically. And so, let's see. Okay, now, um, right. So, for IR, it, we need to find X, Y, and Z symmetries. So, if the vibrational mode has the same symmetry as X, Y, and Z, then it's IR active. For Raman, it's got to have X, Y, Z sort of squared, quadratic terms. So, for example, that could be X, Y, that could be Z squared, that could be X squared minus Y squared, etc. There's lots of them. So, any quadratic terms... Uh, will um, will will give uh, uh, Raman activity. Now uh, I'm going to highlight in green again. If we have a look at the group table in the middle of of the screen, then uh, what our v modes are is we have A1 and we have B1, two different modes. And A1 is the same as Z, and B1 is the same as X. And also, A1 is the same as X squared and Y squared and Z squared, and B1 is the same as XZ. Okay, and so because of those terms appearing there, <coughs> what that means is that we can sort of summarize the activity with a little table where we say IR and Raman to A1 and B1 and they are all active like so. Okay. So that's a sort of handy way of representing the activity. And so what that means is that in an infrared spectrum, you would expect for water to see three vibrational modes contributing to that spectrum. And in a Raman spectrum for water, you'd also expect to see the same three vibrational modes uh, contributing. Okay, so now... Um, the last thing that um, I want to do in this video is actually just draw some little pictures to show you what these vibrations look like. 
so uh, for the stretches we have one which sort of looks like this we draw the water molecule we've got uh, the water oxygen going up the two hydrogens going out and um, it doesn't look very symmetrical but that's meant to be the symmetric stretch so both bonds lengthen at the same time as opposed to what we have just next to it and now the hydrogens are moving sort of in opposite directions and the oxygen's moving over there so one bond is getting longer and the other bond is getting shorter and this one is the anti symmetric stretch and this has got symmetry A1 and this has got symmetry B1 now for the bend bending vibration what we have is something that looks a little bit like this there's our water Two hydrogens move together, and maybe the oxygen moves up a little bit. And again, that has got symmetry of uh, A1. Okay, so um, I have run out of a page or screen to write on, and um, I hope that uh, this uh, series of videos has been helpful. In terms of um, uh, figuring out how to calculate what the vibrational normal modes are for uh, a molecule, we've gone through the example of water. We've figured out what the normal uh, modes are. They've got symmetries 2A1 plus B1. And uh, we've figured out which ones are stretches and which are bends. Now, the final thing. Uh, I, I want to uh, point out is uh, that um, uh, down here we're looking at the different stretches and bending vibrations what they actually look like um, here this uh, can be done with group theory it's a little bit more complicated uh, to do um, but uh, you need to use a projection operator and um, I'm not going to cover how to do that. Um, but I really show those uh, diagrams just um, for completeness to show what those uh, vibrations look like. The other thing which um, is a bit of a pitfall, uh, if you go on to uh, look at other molecules, um, and that is uh, just be aware that when you have gamma, of x y and z in the e column it must give you three always because x y and z are always three together with uh, in e and um, if we if, you, if you look at group tables there are some groups where you have doubly degenerate or triply degenerate groups so for example in uh, C3V, then Z is A1, and it's sort of X and Y together are E, and you have to be careful that X, Y, and Z together are A1 plus E. You don't need to add uh, the, um, you don't need to add the E twice. Uh, the E is doubly degenerate. It contains X and it contains Y together at the same time. Um, so if you do add E twice, you'll find that uh, here uh, for E with the representation for X, Y, and Z, what you'll get is a number five. And uh, that's something to, to avoid. It should always be three because there's always three dimensions. When we do nothing, they should uh, stay uh, 
Okay, I think that's the uh, end of uh, this um, uh, talk. There is one final point which uh, is uh, relevant to uh, IR and Roman activity, which is just a handy little rule to be aware of. And that is, if a molecule has I, if it has inversion symmetry, then no mode is both IR and Raman active. It can be IR active, it can be Raman active, it can be neither IR nor Raman active, but it cannot be both if you have inversion as uh, one of your symmetries. Okay, right. So that is uh, all for now.